Get up here. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6 says this. Direct your children onto the right path. And when they are older, they will not leave it. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 4 says, Children, obey your parents as the Lord wants, because this is the right thing to do. The command says, Honor your father and mother. This is the first command that has a promise with it, and that promise is this. Then everything will be well with you, and you will have a long life on the earth. Fathers, do not make your children angry but raise them with the training and teaching of the Lord. There are a lot of scriptures that speak directly to parents and children. I think most of us are familiar with the phrase, spare the rod and spoil the child. Well, there are some biblical verses that probably come to mind. One of them is Proverbs 19, verse 18, that says, discipline your children while there is still hope. Avoiding it can be deadly. Proverbs 13, verse 24 says, If you love your children, you will correct them. If you don't love them, you won't correct them. And Colossians chapter 3, verse 21 says, Fathers, don't overcorrect your children, or they will grow up feeling inferior and frustrated. Like I said, there are a lot of verses, a lot of scripture that speak to parenting and, and children. There's one particular scripture verse that has touched my heart, though. And it's a verse that I've used in the past when giving a sermon for child dedications. And that's what we're going to do in just a little while. We're going to have some child dedications. But I want to use that verse again for this message. Has everybody done handing out gum over there yet? Because, man, there's this whole buzz going on over there in that section. Kaylee, are you done handing out gum? Is it, is it that bright in here, honey? Can you take off your glasses? Thank you. Out there, I like seeing your eyes. I thought we'd have to rededicate a couple children. <laughs> Anyways, there's this one particular scripture verse that I've used in the past with child dedications, and I want to use it again for this message. And it's probably not as familiar as some of those ones that I just read to you, but I do believe that it has great application for parents and it has great application for every Christian. I mean, it concerns our behavior. Now, before we look at this one verse that I'm talking about, I want to make sure that we have uh, the right perspective on, on some things here. I, I, I want to make sure that, that, that there are a few things that, that, that are clear because I know I'm going to be talking about parents and children and we're going to do a, a, a child dedications. But this sermon, I don't want you to turn off mentally, you know. I don't want you to say, this isn't for me. My kids are grown or whatever. This is for every single one of us. Let me start by asking you a few questions, and they all have to do with children. Question number one. Are children born into this world fully capable to survive on their own? No. Question number two. Other than instinct, can we say that children are born void of or without any knowledge concerning good and evil? Yes. Question number three. Do children have to learn how to do everything that will help them to survive physically and emotionally and spiritually? Yes. Question number four. Whose responsibility is it to teach them, to train the children how to live and, and to survive? Well, parents. Question number five. How do children learn? They learn from us. They learn from parents. They learn from everybody around them. I mean, what is one of the first things that we notice about babies besides how cute they are? It's how alert they are. And you know what? Whether we realize it or not, they stay alert for the rest of their lives. I mean, they're always watching and learning. 
always watching and learning. You know, sometimes I think some of us think that we've learned it all. How many of you have stopped learning? I'm glad you didn't raise your hand. How many of you know everything there is to learn? Again, I'm glad you're not raising your hand. Think about what you may be teaching your children. Think about it. Think about what you may be teaching the children that are around you. I mean, they learn by watching and imitating the people around them, starting with their parents. Everything a parent does, a child is watching. It doesn't matter if they're combing their hair, if they sneeze, if they're shaving, whatever it is. You see, children are born without wisdom. I mean, they gain knowledge. You know, they accumulate knowledge by watching and imitating their parents and, and the rest of us that are, that are around them in the village, so to speak. And when they use the knowledge that they've learned, then that is wisdom. I want to make sure you understand what I just said because knowledge is nothing more than accumulated information. But when you begin to use that information, that knowledge, in a manner that it is supposed to be used, then that is wisdom. So what I want you to do right now is just take a few moments. You don't have to get up. I want you to, to address uh, the person on each side of you and, and the person in front of you if there is one and the person behind you if there is one and just tell them, hey, we're going to talk about wisdom this morning. Go ahead. All right, now for the Bible verse. So if you have your Bibles, and I hope that you do, please find the letter to the Colossians, the book of Colossians. Just a little book there. It's going to be up here on the screen, and I'm going to be using King James translation for this verse, simply because I like the way it reads. Colossians, and then find chapter 4, verse 5. Colossians 4, 5. says this, walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Would you let me pray? Father, thank you for the opportunity of being here this morning. Thank you for the freedom and the privilege that we have to openly worship you to sing songs of worship, to pray, to fellowship with each other and come before you corporately as a body, as a family. Father, this morning we've talked about strife in our world. Cindy has shared. Linda has shared. So, Father, help us understand how we individually and as a church body can reduce that strife. Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit would help us to understand this one little scripture verse that we're going to look at this morning. We ask that your will be done in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So what do you suppose that this verse is telling us? Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Well, the word walk here is talking about our conduct. I mean, it, it, it's how we act, it's how we play, it's how we do business, it's how we treat others, it's how we carry ourselves. In essence, it means how we live. Then what does in wisdom mean? Well, it means in Christ. Christ-like, like Christ. I mean, this verse could read like this, and in some translation it does, you know, walk in Christ, or walk Christ-like, or walk like Christ. In other words, be like Christ. Do business like Christ. Treat others like Christ. Carry yourself like Christ. Live like Christ. Then there's that phrase that says, now, uh, toward them that are without. Without what? Well, without Christ. 
It means all those that are around you, including your children, especially your children, all those that are without Christ. Be the Christian example that Christ meant you to be. Listen. Children learn by imitating what they see. So if you talk the talk, then you've got to walk the walk. You need to portray Christ. You need to be like Christ in everything that you do. That is what this dedication service is really about. It's about parents that are coming this morning before God and before His church to commit themselves to be dedicated Christian examples for their children. And the church, that's you, as a witness, must in itself be a dedicated Christian example for these children as well. Now, they're pledging before God and people that they are going to walk in wisdom. That's what the parents are going to be doing. They're, going to, they're, 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 they're pledging that they're going to live like Christ towards their children, towards those that are without, those that are, are without Christ, everybody around them, but especially their children. And today these parents are committing themselves to this overwhelming task. I mean, their, their kids have been entrusted to them by God. Our children don't belong to us. Our children are entrusted to us by God. We're just stewards, and we need to be good stewards of them. So if these parents stay faithful to God, then they'll succeed in the task that is before them. And this doesn't go just for those parents that are participating this morning. This goes for every single one of us. Stay faithful to God. Walk in wisdom. Be like Christ. And you'll succeed in the task or the tasks that God puts before you. But it takes commitment. It takes real commitment. Not just an outward symbol or, or, or a service, but an inward commitment. It's a change of heart. It's a covenant between you and God. And it takes a lot of hard work. And it takes a lot of prayer. It takes a lot of courage, strength, and patience. It, it, it takes a lot of love. But with real commitment, with true dedication, it can be done. Now, I challenge every Christian here this morning to live what you believe in front of everybody, especially children. And parents, all parents, live what you believe. If you believe Christ answers prayer, then be an example and give him something to answer. Pray boldly and pray without ceasing. If you believe Christ will take care of you, then rely on him instead of yourself. Don't just talk about trusting God and then whenever there's a crisis or a conflict or a frustration, try to control it and go, oh, what am I going to do? Rely on him. If you believe that God's word gives Christians direction, then read it. Read his word. Read your Bible instead of the latest self-help book or the most popular fiction or, or romance book or, or watching TV. If you believe that children's church and teen kids and vacation Bible school are an important part of the church, if you believe that they're good for your kids, then be here with your kids and be willing to support it yourself. For example, this afternoon at 5 o'clock, we have a children's ministry team meeting. If you're involved in children's church or teen kids or any of the children's ministries, it is important for you to be here. If you want to be involved in them, it is important for you to be here. If you believe that church attendance is, is what a Christian should do, then be here on Sunday. Be here on Wednesday. Be here to be fed by God's Word. And for goodness sakes, Join a small group Bible study and be faithful to that. If you believe that Christians should obey the law, then slow down and stop speeding. If you believe that bad-mouthing somebody is wrong, then bless the one that cut you off in traffic. Don't shake your fist at them. I mean, if somebody has offended you, forgive them and move on. That includes Facebook, too. Because your children and other non-Christians and even other Christians are always watching you. 
So walk in wisdom. Be like Christ, especially to those who are without Christ. Now, there's one more part of, in this verse that we haven't talked about yet, the last part of the verse, and it's just as important as everything else that we've talked about so far. The verse says, walk in wisdom toward them that are without. And then that last part says, redeeming the time. What do you suppose Paul means here with that phrase, redeeming the time? I mean, he's, he means use every opportunity. That's what he says. Use every opportunity. This verse has two commands for every Christian. We've already established that the first one is to be like Christ, to be like Jesus. And the second command here is to use every opportunity, redeem the time, make the most of every opportunity. This verse says, be like Christ to those without Christ and use every opportunity to do it. Christians are to use every opportunity to represent Christ to a lost and dying world. We live right in the middle of a lost and dying world. We live right in the middle of a lost and dying community. Parents, you are to use every opportunity to be the dedicated Christian example for your children because you are to be in Christ and you are to be like Christ. I don't know about you, but I've heard many times over my life Somebody has said, we Christians are the only Bible that some lost people will ever see. Well, I hate to tell you this, but your child is born lost. Your child is born without Christ. And just to be clear on this, parents, you are your child's Bible. So I need to ask you, knowing that your children watch everything you do, knowing that you are to be like Christ, that you are to use every opportunity, let me ask you, are you the real deal? Are you the genuine article? Or are you a version of the Bible that has just left some things out, omitted certain doctrines and commands that make Christianity what you want it to be? and not what God intends it to be. Let me ask everybody in this room, are you the genuine article? I challenge you to check your morals, to check every step you make against God's Word. The Bible is a Christian's roadmap. I mean, it's our guidelines for living. You could call it God's owner's manual for our lives. I mean, and until your child, until your children accept Christ as their Lord and Savior, it's up to you to be the guide. Every Christian in this church is somebody's guide. Whether you know it or not, a lot of people, especially children, are watching you. So walk in wisdom. Be like Christ so that you don't send them down the path of destruction. Be a roadblock on that path to hell with your Christ-like example. Use every opportunity to spread the love of Jesus through your life. Hmm. We're going to have the dedication service now, so I'm going to ask the fathers, Tony and Brian and Nelson, go down and get your child child not just the three that we're dedicating this morning we don't want to disrupt all of children's church and, and have them stop and hurt them up here and then hurt them back downstairs we want to let the children that are down there go ahead and continue uh, in their activities but while we're waiting on the three fathers to bring their kids up now I'm going to ask you to stand up and I'm going to ask you to find at least three people that you haven't talked to yet this morning and tell them Listen, you need to walk in wisdom and be like Christ. Go ahead.
All right, if you could find your seats, and if I could ask the parents to come on up with their children. Oh, why don't you guys just have a seat down there? Okay. Are all the other microphones off? Make sure all the other microphones are off, please. Thank you. You guys remember your letters? All right, life offers opportunities to celebrate new beginnings. So, Josephine, Brock, and Ava. And, and by the way, in your bulletins, Ava spelled wrong. It's spelled A-V-E. It's supposed to be A-V-A. Curses to that spell check on my computer. Anyways... Children, I want you to be able to stand up here, well, be held up here, and see the church family before you. I want you to know the responsibility that this congregation has in providing an atmosphere that will be conducive to directing all three of you towards faith. Just as you walked down the aisle with your parents, or was carried down the aisle by your parent, I pray that one day you'll walk down this aisle on your own and that you'll come publicly to profess your faith in Jesus. Church, I want you to know that before we can blink an eye, these children will be ready to celebrate their graduation. They have a responsibility. We have a responsibility between today and that day when they graduate to encourage them toward faith. Josephine Winter. <laughs> she's pointing. She's pointing to grandmas and grandpas. <laughs> Do you know that Josephine is the English adopted name for Josephine? I mean, it's the French equivalent of the Hebrew name Joseph, well, Joseph, as we know it. The original Hebrew name translates. And it means God shall add or God shall increase. In Genesis, we learn that Joseph was the most favored son. That's why Jacob made him that robe of many colors. And we know that Josephine is most favored. Each of the parents have written a letter that they will share with us now, one at a time. But after the service is over, it's going to be sealed in an envelope with another letter from me to be opened up on their 12th birthday. Brian, would you share yours? Dear Josephine, you are probably reading this letter as you prepare to enter your, your teenage years. Our hope is that you become the young woman that God has created you to be. We have been praying for you since we first found out you were coming to us and will continue to pray for you as you grow. We will always remember the day that you came into our lives. You were a breach baby and we had spent the last few weeks before your arrival doing everything we could to get you to move into the right position. Even with all our attempts, you showed us your determination to stay where you were all the way up to the C-section that we had to schedule. You have continued to show that strength and determination, and we know it will help you throughout your life. Your mom and I have made a decision to put God in the center of our lives and our marriage. 
He is the firm foundation that we rely on, and our prayer is that you will also place your trust in him. We will strive to bring you up to honor the Lord and obey him, but we want your faith to be your own. Like Mary in the New Testament, we want you to yield to God and allow him to work in your life. All things are possible when you put your trust in God, and we will be there to support and encourage you as you make this journey of faith. We believe the most important decision you will make in your life is what you decide about Jesus. He has completely changed our lives, and we want you to have the same experience. If you surrender your life and follow him, you will still have troubles and trials, but you will also have a source of strength that nothing else in the world can match. We will do our best to show you Jesus in our daily life, but we will not always be perfect parents. It is very easy to say we are following Jesus, but it is not as easy to live that out. We ask for your forgiveness for the times when we fail, times that we will lose our temper and say things in the heat of the moment, and times that when we will dis disappoint you and fail to live up to your expectations. No matter what happens, we want you to know that we will always love you. Nothing you can do will make us love you any less. We want you to be able to trust us enough to feel comfortable talking about things going on in your life, and we promise to do our best to earn that trust. We are proud of you, Josephine, and look forward to everything you will accomplish in your life. Always remember that God loves you. You cannot earn this love, and you cannot lose it. He has a plan for your life that will be better than anything you can imagine if you will only trust him with all our love, Mom and Dad. Thank you, Brian. I'll take the letter, and Misty will take the microphone, but let me ask you and Kristen. Brian and Kristen Winter, do you vow to provide an atmosphere and spiritual nurturing that will incline Josephine's heart towards the gospel and a saving relationship with Jesus Christ? If so, say, we do. Brock Robbins. Brock. <laughs> Do you know that Brock comes from the old English meaning badger? Ultimately, it's an ancient Celtic loan word meaning the same thing. Now, the badger was a particularly sacred animal to the early Celts, symbolic of survival, encompassing the traits of tenacity and courage and willpower. Generally speaking, a fighting spirit unafraid in the face of danger and unwilling to back down from the most dire of threats the feisty little badger became a, re a regal figure to the ancient Celtic people and I think Brock describes this little guy perfectly Misty you have a letter Brock you are already two years old how can this be you have been such a blessing to daddy and me we pray for your health for your safety, and for your growth. But we are also praying that you will come to know Jesus and have a relationship with him starting from a really young age. It is the most important decision your father and I have made, and it will be the most important decision you could ever make. There is so much I could say to you, what I hope and dream for you, what I want your childhood to be like, who I want you to marry someday, all of that is great and even important, but no matter what your future holds, please always know and claim these truths. Number one, God loves you. He loves you fully and completely. Nothing that you do or can't do could ch ever change that. Number two, we love you unconditionally and delight in who you are. Nothing that you do or can't do could ever change that. As long as we live, your dad and I will always be here for you. We will cheer for you, we will cry with you, we will support you in whatever you choose to do. You should know, Dad hopes you play football. I bet you and him will play together often, like you already do. Yeah. Just always promise to come home to Mom. We are going to make mistakes, which you will probably agree with by the time you read this. We are going to disappoint you. We are going to frustrate you. But anything and everything we do, because we love you and you are in our best interest at heart. We trust that God will use us to model a good marriage to you, to model what it looks like to serve and honor God, and use us to raise you and train you up in him. Dream big. Never give up on your dreams. Have confidence in yourself because God created you and he makes no mistakes. We pray you have big and great faith. I know God has huge plans for your life, 
Be open to where he calls you and where he leads you. We love you, Mom and Dad. Thank you, Misty. And letter. Misty and Nelson Robbins, do you vow to provide an atmosphere and spiritual nurturing that will incline Brock's heart toward the gospel and a saving relationship with Jesus Christ? We do. Ava Karenite. Ava. Hi, my love. Do you know that the name Ava, A-V-A, means life? Its origin is from the Hebrew name Shava, C-H-A-V-A, which means living, or it means alive. It's the biblical name for Eve, the first woman in the Bible. She was created by God to be an easer and a connecto, a helper companion for Adam, a perfect and equal match. Genesis tells us Adam named his wife Eve because she would become the mother of all the living. Ava is certainly full of life and laughter. Tony, you have a letter. Ava, God gave us a special gift when he gave, when he gave us to you because you are our gift. We know that you don't belong to us. You are the Lord's. We are dedicating you in church today because we promise to do our best to raise you in the path of the Lord. Your mom and I want you to know that Je want you to know Jesus and follow him more than anything else in the world. We pray that you, your mom and I, are faithful examples in your life. Mom and I love you, and we love one another one, uh, very much, but we love Jesus more. Our number one priority in life is the Lord. Our relationship with one another is secondary. Our hope is that when Jesus comes into your heart, you will not push him away. That you will welcome him with open arms and know the blessings that he will bring to you. And based on your mom and me, we promise to live our lives to satisfy the Lord. We also want you to know that we will probably try to keep you from moving out <laughs> when it's time. But that's what we're supposed to do. And personally, you won't be able to marry until I'm dead. <laughs> because that is what the Lord told me. <laughs> we want you to be free to follow. We want you to be free to follow where the Lord leads you. Don't ever say no to him. Even if we, even if we seem to stray from the Lord, don't say no to him. We are praying for your sensitiv sensitivity towards him. You bring us so much joy. We are overwhelmed by the blessing that the Lord has given us. Believe me, we are very overwhelmed. Our goals for your life are to teach you about Jesus, his love for you, your response to him, and sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. Love for the church, and we pray that you will see Christ's reflection in us. We love you, Ava. Thank you. Tony and Katie, Karenite. Do you vow to provide an atmosphere and spiritual nurturing that will incline Ava's heart towards the gospel and a saving relationship with Jesus Christ? Let me talk to the church for just a second. Church family, and you can respond to this. Do you take the responsibility to assist all of these families as you teach and work with them in children's church and team kids and preteen and youth group and discipleship classes on mission trips and conversations in the hallways of this church and the byways of life that will encourage them in their spiritual development. If so, say, we do. We do. Parents, Scripture commands you as, as moms and dads to teach your child about the Lord Jesus Christ. Only then will Josephine and Brock and Ava be adequately equipped for the challenges of this life and sufficiently prepared to meet the Lord when he returns. But your child's spiritual welfare will not be accomplished simply by telling them about Jesus. It is the words of your mouth combined with the obvious presence of the Holy Spirit in your life that will effectively communicate the message of God's love and saving power to your child. 
The birth of your child needs to inspire within each of you a greater resolve to let Jesus shine through you by being even more intentional in your pursuit of holiness and the supremacy of God in your marriage, in your lives, and in your home. So I ask all three couples, are you committed? If so, say, we're committed. Can I ask the grandparents of these children and the families of these children to stand? I'm going to ask you the same thing. Are you committed? If so, say, we're committed. All right, sit down, please. Church. As a church, we're all part of the family of God. As a family, we need to work alongside these parents in their efforts to portray Christ to their children. I guess the question is, are we merely spectators or will we rise to the challenge of being brothers and sisters in Christ and exhibit godly characteristics and thus provide continuity in what is being taught at home and what is being seen at church? Church. If you will rise to the challenge of being brothers and sisters in Christ, then say, we are family. We are family. And as a family, we must also be willing to hold one another accountable, confront one another when a mistake is made in order that the purity and integrity of our commitments are maintained. You have heard Brian and Kristen and Nelson and Misty and Tony and Katie state their commitment to a greater level of Christ-likeness for the sake of their child. Will you now acknowledge their commitment and indicate your willingness, church, to help them keep their promise? If so, say, we are witnesses. Would you bow your heads? Father, these small hands up here are so trusting. They are so innocent, and yet they will grow in a world that has been tainted by hatred and greed and sin and darkness. Lord, we pray that you protect these children. We give them to you. Lord, the future seems so uncertain, and yet we look at these kids, and mysteriously we have hope. We ask that you guide their way. Make their path straight and give them strength. We give them to you. As parents and spiritual leaders and teachers and mentors and friends, we ask that you anoint us to give them an overwhelming sense of security that can only come from you. Anoint us as ministers. We want them to see you in every aspect of our lives. And so again, we give them to you. When they are hurting, may we minister to them through your power. When they fail, May we offer the same grace that you offer us. When they are lonely, may we reach out to them and commune with them and remind them that you will never leave them, that you will never forsake them. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Mothers, would you hold your child? Fathers, I'm going to ask you to anoint your child and then lay your hands on them. Fathers, would you place your hand on your child? By God's power, may you be wise, may you be strong, may you be pure. And all God's people said, Amen. All right. We're almost done, but I have something for you. Dads, I don't normally give flowers to other men. But these are for you. I present you with the red rose, Brian and Nelson Tony. It's a symbol of the bloodline. 
As father figure, you're responsible for the spiritual direction of your home. You are the priest of your household. You must provide for them materially as well. You cannot take your money to heaven with you. You cannot take your home with you or any of your worldly goods. But if you train Josephine up in the way she should go, if you train Brock up in the way he should go, if you train Ava up in the way she should go, then you can take these precious lives with you to heaven. Ladies. Oops. Not you. I present to you a yellow sunshine rose as a symbol of a mother's love. There's something special about a mother's tender hand and loving prayers. Josephine will turn to you, Kristen. Brock will turn to you, Misty. And Ava will turn to you, Katie for comfort and love when they will not turn to anyone else. So live your life for Jesus and your child will do the same. Now, and uh, my wife was wise enough to get plastic flowers for the children. <laughs> this is for you, Ava. Something to chew on, honey. This is for you, Brock. This is for you, Josephine. Thank you. To Josephine and Brock and Ava, I present these white roses. They are pure and spotless. And my prayer is that these children's souls be this pure and spotless at the great rapture of the church. Would you bow your heads and let me pray? Father, help us to remember these promises that we have all made here today. Promises to you, to the parents and their children, and to each other. Father, we pray that you would hold us accountable. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. And now it's time to sing. Let me clear off the bench for Janet. I'm going to ask all of you to stand.